There is no denying that modern day CGI effects are a thing of beauty. That when they're in the hands of a filmmaker who knows what they're doing, they can soar far above the limitations of practical effects technologies. And while practical effects have become an increasing rarity in major Hollywood productions over the last 20 plus years, the unmistakable tangible quality of animatronics, miniatures and props physically present on set will always have an appeal to audiences. Perhaps the best compliment that can be paid to practical effects these days is their ability to convince everybody that they're actually CGI. With that in mind then, I'm Ellie with What Culture, and here are 10 amazing practical movie effects shots everybody assumed were CGI. Number 10. The no mirror effect in Mission Impossible The Rogue Nation. Mission Impossible The Rogue Nation marked the point where director Christopher McQuarrie took the reins of the franchise and shot it into the stratosphere where in-camera practical effects are concerned. Though the films did make an effort to point out the very real high wire situations Tom Cruise put himself in, there's one sneaky shot in Rogue Nation that you probably never even considered could be practical. When Benji is being fitted with a mask in front of a mirror, most people freely assume the shot was achieved by CGI, because why wouldn't it be? But in truth, the scene was realised with no visual effects whatsoever. Instead, the mirror is simply an empty frame, with six people appearing in the shot on either side of the mirror's threshold. Three actors, three stand-ins and matching their movements to convincingly simulate a reflection. To make the final effect so convincing, the camera movements and actor blocking had to be absolutely note perfect. Though Rogue Nation isn't the first film to execute this trick, both Evil Dead 2 and Terminator 2 famously used it, given this film's recency, you'd be forgiven for assuming that they just pulled it off in post. Number 9. The Underwater Apartment in the Shape of Water One of the most visually evocative scenes in Guillermo del Toro's best picture winning The Shape of Water occurs in the film's opening title sequence, where protagonist Eliza dreams that her apartment is flooded, causing her and various pieces of furniture to float. Given Del Toro's expert ability at executing complex, effects-heavy set pieces, it was easy to assume that this was just a brilliantly convincing CGI effect. But alas, its base was, in fact, totally practical. The scene was shot using an old-school filmmaking technique called dry for wet, where Sally Hawkins and various props in the scene were actually suspended in the air by monofilament wires, with murky lighting used to replicate the ambience of actual water. Though VFX touch-ups were employed to make Hawkins' hair seem wavy, to add a watery texture to the scene, and to add a few more floating props, the bulk of this scene was incredibly pulled off in camera. Number 8. Jar Jar's hand in Star Wars Episode 1 The Phantom Menace. It is no secret that actor Ahmed Best served as a stand-in for Jar Jar Binks in The Phantom Menace, appearing in a practical rudimentary costume which was later painted over by the film's VFX team. As such, it would be fair to assume that every frame of Jar Jar we see in the movie is a digital effect. But that's surprisingly not the case. For the brief close-up shot where Jar Jar gets his hand stuck in one of the engines on Anakin's pod racer, George Lucas eschewed CGI entirely by simply using Best's real hand within his practical on-set Jar Jar sleeve. It lasts just a few seconds, but probably saved the production a few thousand bucks in VFX billings. So that's something at least. Number 7. From sepia to technicolour in The Wizard of Oz. You won't find many more iconic movie scenes than the heart-stopping moment in The Wizard of Oz where Dorothy enters the land of Oz for the first time, and her sepia-toned world transitions into colour. As Dorothy opens the door from the farmhouse, the colourful Oz can be envisioned beyond the doorframe, an effect which audiences would understandably assume was painstakingly painted frame by frame in post-production. Though the original plan was to hand-tint every frame of the scene sepia where necessary, this ultimately turned out to be too expensive and too time consuming. So the studio settled on a much quicker, cheaper and altogether smarter solution. Instead, the farmhouse interior was painted sepia, and when Dorothy opens the door she's played by a stand-in for Judy Garland, who is also painted sepia to match. As the door opens and we dolly forward into Oz, Garland then walks into frame in her iconic blue-white dress. To the unassuming viewer, it seems like this must have been achieved in post-production, but alas, it was 100% captured on the day. Number 6. The T-Rex in Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom 
Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom is a $190 million CGI slathered behemoth of a movie, such that it's easy to forget that it actually contains more practical effects than any other entry in the Jurassic Park series. Perhaps the most technically impressive of all the practical dino scenes occurs when Owen and Claire sneak into the T-Rex's cell to acquire some of its blood, so they can give beloved raptor Blue a blood transfusion. Despite the technically imposing intimacy of the scene, Chris Pratt and Bryce Dallas Howard are indeed acting opposite a gigantic T-Rex animatronic. Though it's easy to picture a scenario where the two actors were instead working with an unsightly green blob which would be painted into dinosaur form later, director J.A. Biona wanted to ensure that Pratt and Howard had something tangible to react to. In a thoroughly mediocre film, it's actually tellingly one of the very best scenes. Number 5. Baby Jack Black in The House with a Clock in Its Walls Eli Roth's fantasy comedy film The House with a Clock in Its Walls is filled to the brim with lavish visual effects that draw total attention to themselves. But surely the most memorable single effect in the entire film was actually completely practical. Late in the film, the titular clock turns Jonathan Barnevelt into a baby. Or rather, Jack Black's adult head is attached to a tiny baby's body. Audiences would be in their right mind to assume the creepy effect was created digitally. But in actual fact, Baby Jack was an animatronic creation. Between the startling lifelike recreation of Black's face and especially the shockingly convincing range of facial motion, this is an absolutely masterful feat of practical effects. Knowing that the cast were able to react and interact with a physical prop only makes the scene that much more off-putting. Number 4. The Floating Pen in 2001 A Space Odyssey Movies don't get much more ahead of their time than Stanley Kubrick's sci-fi opus 2001 A Space Odyssey, a film that remains a towering benchmark for groundbreaking visual effects and still looks spectacular today. One of the film's most memorable images is that of a pen floating in the space shuttle. One could assume Kubrick simply employed cutting-edge compositing techniques to insert the pen into the shot during post, but in truth this was completed 100% in camera. The trick was devilishly brilliantly simple. The pen was was attached to a sheet of glass with double-sided tape, while crew members simply moved the sheet of glass around to simulate the pen's movement in zero gravity. And so, when the air hostess plucks the pen out of thin air, she's actually subtly detaching it from the glass. If you look closely, you can actually see a slight jerk as she unsticks it. Perhaps more than any other scene in the film, this confirms the absurd creativity of Kubrick and his production team. At this point, Filmmaking truly transcends the form to become a beautiful magic trick. Number 3. The Cityscapes in Blade Runner 2049 Blade Runner 2049 is one of the most visually breathtaking films of the last decade. And though Denis Villeneuve clearly delivered as much as he possibly could practically, there are still 1,190 VFX shots within the film. The gorgeous, towering cityscapes of Los Angeles featured throughout the film are easily accepted as entirely digital. Digital. Given that big budget Hollywood productions have increasingly shied away from practical miniatures, which in addition to being more time consuming are often now more expensive than CGI. But in order to remain stylistically consistent with Ridley Scott's original film, Villeneuve hired Weta Workshop to create absurdly intricate miniature cityscapes. Though some of the city shots receive CGI embellishments for spaceship signs and so on, the buildings themselves and accompanying lighting were largely all achieved in camera. As miniature work becomes more scarce in blockbuster films with each passing year, sublime work of this scale and quality becomes ever more precious. Number 2. The Dying Archillion in Men in Black Despite being almost 25 years old, the original Men in Black has aged like a fine wine, in large part due to the smart combination of CGI and practical effects. You'll surely remember the fantastic sequence where Jay and Kay visit the morgue and speak to a dying Archillion alien that's been piloting a humanoid robot. The little alien creature is so fantastically expressive that it suggests the effect was achieved through well-aged CGI. But incredibly, the tiny guy was a purely animatronic creation. Oscar-winning special effects wizard Rick Baker was tasked with creating two animatronic versions of the alien, a smaller version for medium shots and a larger version for close-ups. Director Barry Sonnenfeld cuts between the two models seamlessly. But most impressive of all, the lip-sync of the alien, which is one of the tougher aspects of working with animatronics, was perfect. So perfect, in fact, that we all believed it was CGI. 
Number one, space in the fountain. Nobody is going to tell you that Darren Aronofsky's masterful sci-fi romantic drama, The Fountain, doesn't contain a hefty amount of CGI. But many of the elements that are assumed to be digital were actually achieved practically. Because the film's budget was halved to $35 million during pre-production, Aronofsky was required to get creative in order to achieve his hallucinogenic deep space effects throughout. He ultimately decided to eschew CGI wherever possible, in favour of macro photography, hiring specialist Peter Parks to create surreal imagery by reacting chemicals and bacteria together and filming it in extreme close-up. All in all, these effects only cost $140,000, and during post-production the footage Parks shot was composited together to create a dreamlike landscape, quite unlike anything audiences had ever seen in a film before. Though some of the sequences were indeed embellished with CGI, the gorgeous backdrops are entirely practical effects, yet rendered unrecognisable to the layperson due to the magnification involved. Parks perhaps put it best himself. When these images are projected on a big screen, you feel like you're looking at infinity. That's because the same forces at work in the water, gravitational effects, settlement, refractive indices, are happening in outer space. And that concludes our list. If you can think of any other examples, then do let us know in the comments below. And while you're there, don't forget to like and subscribe and tap that notification bell. Also head over to Twitter and follow us there and I can be found across various social medias just by searching Ellie Little Child. I've been Ellie with What Culture. I hope you have a magical day and I'll see you real soon.